Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Health and Wellness Sport, and I am Dr. Lewis. Now today, I want to take you stepwise through blood types. Now, remember there are so many different types of blood or blood groups. So what I want to take you through is what we call the ABO blood type. Why am I choosing ABO blood type? Because this is the most common one and this is the one that can elicit immune reactions. Now remember for ages we have been doing blood transfusions and all that and people have been surviving and other have, others have been dying. Why? Because of this. Okay. So today I want to take time to take you through the different blood uh, types that come as a result of ABO and how, who can get blood from who and how these uh, reactions occur for those who unfortunately lose their lives. Okay. So now if you hear ABO this is an immunogenic type of blood group, meaning on the surfaces of red blood cells, we have things called antigens. And these antigens are basically the means of these red blood cells communicating to each other. So they identify themselves with flags, which are called antigens. Okay. So now if you have a red, if you are a red blood cells and you have a flag that indicates A, that means your blood group A. So from this, we have four different types of blood groups. Now, blood group number one has to be A, then AB, sorry, B, then AB, and finally O. So from this, we get these four types of uh, blood groups. Now, if you are a red blood cell, so this is our red blood cell, if you are A, let's just draw all of them, then we explain. So if you are blood group A, you identify yourself with A, which means you will wave a flag that has A. So on the surface of red blood cells, you'll get a flag that has A, the A antigen. If you are blood group B, you will have an antigen that waves a flag that is B. So that means it identifies with all bloods that have a B antigen. If you are AB, then you'll have two flags. So that is A. Then the other one is B because you have both A and B. Now, if you are blood group O, then you don't have any antigens. Okay. So remember, we only have two antigens. That is A and B. So this one has both antigens A and B, and this one is O, so it has no antigens. Good. Step number two. So if you are from this blood type, or let's say these are kingdoms, or these are villages. So you, if you hail from village A, you are waving a flag that is from village A, you will create an army. So this army is supposed to help you fight enemies, and your enemies cannot have an A. So you will fight, since you have two antigens, so you will only create antibodies against B. Which means, if you see any cell that has a B, you fight it because it's your enemy. So, A will create an army or antibodies against B. So, the army for A will be B antibodies. So, anti-B antibodies. Okay, and antibodies are basically the substances that help the cells. or the, These are basically your immune system. They fight antigens. So if they recognize a different antigen from themselves, then they fight it and kill it. Okay, And that is the basis of agglutination, which just means blood coagulation. That when sometimes you do a blood transfusion and this patient gets uh, these reactions and the blood starts to clot, the patient might end up dying. So if a patient, if, if, if someone is blood group A, then he will develop an army against B. Okay, So he will fight anything that has B. Now if you are B blood group, you are waving a big uh, flag, you will develop antibodies against A because you don't identify with A. So you'll have anti-A antibodies, meaning anything that has A, you kill. Now, AB, just understand that this is, I'm, I'm trying to make a scenario to make you understand. Okay, so AB has A and B on the surface. Okay, since it has A and B on the surface, and that means he will not have any antibodies. Okay, 
So he cannot form any antibodies. Why? Because if he forms antibodies against B, then he will kill you. He will be killed. If he has antibodies, anti-antibodies against A, then he will be killed because he experienced he has all, all A and B antigens on the surface. Okay? Good. Now this one, blood group O, has no flag. So he doesn't identify as A or B, meaning he can form an army that can fight both A and B. So this one has anti-A antibodies to kill A and has anti-B antibodies to kill B. Okay? So this is the basis of uh, uh, who will give blood to who or who will donate blood to who. This is where it starts. Now, look at this this way. If you, you are waving a, a flag A, so you identify with A, the number one person you can get blood from is first of all A. Okay? So A will give you blood. He will get blood from A. He cannot get blood from B. Why? Because he has an army that kills B. So that will be a reaction and can be very deadly. So he will only get blood from A because he identifies with flag A. And also he can get blood from O. Why am I skipping B, A, B? Because here we have B. There's a flag that is B. And we have antibodies against that. We have an army against that B. So we cannot take blood from this one. We cannot take blood from B. So A can only take blood from himself and from O because he doesn't have any flag. Good. B will take blood from B because if he takes blood from A, he has an army against A. So B will take blood from B. B will also take blood from O. The same, same concept because if he takes blood from AB, there is an A flag here and he has an army against A, so he will kill this one. So there will be a reaction. Okay. So B will take blood from B and B will take blood from O. Now, interestingly, what about AB? Okay, so AB has no antibodies, so he has no army. Okay, so he cannot target anybody. And that means AB can take blood from AB himself, he can take blood from O, and he can also take blood from this one because he doesn't have any. Okay, he doesn't have any antibodies. So AB can take blood from A because he has no army for A. He can take blood from B, he has no army for B because he has no army. Then he can take blood from himself, AB. And finally, he can take blood from O. Why? Because he has nothing. Okay? Good. So he can take blood from all of them. And this is why he's called a universal acceptor. So he accepts blood from all of them. Now, what about O? If you look keenly, you realize that O can give blood to A, O can give blood to B, O can give blood to AB, and O can give blood to himself because he doesn't have any flags to fight. So O, blood group O, is what we refer to as the universal donor. So basically those are the terms that I used. So we have a universal acceptor who is AB, and the universal donor, who has to be O. Now, having known that, now you realize when you take a blood group test, or a, a blood test uh, for, for blood group, or blood typing, then you realize sometimes they write on A positive or B negative. This is where complexity comes in, because someday we'll put up a video talking about uh, the rhesus factor in children, why uh, mothers who have... Uh, uh, o blood and fathers who also have O blood and that can be positive or negative will cause a problem in getting children. Okay? So we will discuss that in another video. However, let's understand the complexity of this one. Now, if you have A positive, meaning you are blood group A, so on your surface you are waving A. And then you have a positive, which is basically a connotation for something called Reza's factor. Now, it is called Rhesus factor because it was first identified in the species of monkeys, monkeys that are called Rhesus monkeys, okay? So, it's, it's nothing big. It's just the species of the monkey that is called Rhesus monkeys, okay? So, now, if you are A positive, that means you have a flag for A and also a flag for B. B is the Rhesus. So, it is called a D antibody. So, 
or antigen, sorry. So if you have A positive, means on your surface you have you are waving an A flag and also you are waving another flag that is mean that is saying, yes, I have a positive resus factor. So I have a resus factor in me. So I'm waving A as my identity and I'm also saying I have D as the resus factor. Now, if you are B negative, you do not have a D flag. So negative means I don't have a D flag. Now, interestingly, if you are B negative, so let's deal with B negative, you do not have that flag. Now, if you don't have that flag, meaning you will create antibodies against D. Okay, so if you are B negative, you will form antibodies on the surface. So here you have B as a flag, then you don't have this. So if you don't have this, that means you'll start forming an army against D. Okay, so you'll form an army against D. So here you'll have D, D, D. So you will fight anything that has the D. Like if A positive has a D, so if you get this blood that has antibodies against D, then you'll fight the D. Okay? So now, this means that B negative cannot receive blood from any other blood group that has a positive. Because you already have this D that will fight anything. So B negative will only receive blood from B negative and from O negative. Okay? If you are A positive, that means you will only receive blood from A positive and O positive. Okay? So that is where it gets interesting. So now, this will help you understand uh, how Reza's factor affects uh, pregnant women and how they are supposed to be managed in order to get uh, uh, pregnant and give birth to children. Because this can be dangerous. It can kill the baby. Okay, so yeah, so basically this is a wrap up for blood group and I know this is so complicated and sometimes you, you wonder why you have the A positive and B positive bloods and there's no explanation, you just get the tests and the results. So this helps you to know that if I have a specific type of blood, then I cannot, it cannot react with another uh, type of blood group and that uh, is what we call compatibility. And that's the reason why a compatibility test has to be done before you get a blood transfusion. So that is basically... ABO blood typing.